you trying to mess with me this morning, Gray. You had the bell fade out. It's like, are my hearing aids acting up? <laughs> Go ahead, please. I'm sorry. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to St. Andrew's Anglican Church on the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Can you believe that it's already that far from Easter? Well, Pentecost is approximately 50 days after Easter. And then we're 17 Sundays after Pentecost. So you do the math and it just tells us we're in October. And October means that we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. And we're also getting closer to Advent. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to get, get ahead of myself here because... Uh, Already you're going to be wrapping presents. No, I don't want to go there. Um, birthdays celebrating this week. Holland Loth is celebrating a birthday this week. Um, Adeline Guess is celebrating a birthday this week. Cleary Tanner is celebrating a birthday this week. Michael Tanner is celebrating a birthday this week. Both of them happen to be on the 6th. Um, Anniversary. Carol and Danny Maley are celebrating an anniversary this week. And Father John and Marilyn are celebrating an anniversary, not wedding or anything like that. Yesterday was eight years here at St. Andrews. Where has the time gone? Eight years and you still haven't thrown us out. Did I say that with my outside voice? No. Um, it's been a blessing. I'll talk more about that during the sermon. Um, Wednesday night, Bible study, dinner and Bible study is uh, this Wednesday night, the 5th at 6 p.m. Uh, I also listed the following Wednesday night, so you can put it in your planner. And that's again on the 12th. And our next vestry meeting is next Monday night, October 10th at 6 o'clock in the church meeting room. Uh, what a blessed day today is. It's getting a little cooler. It's October, and uh, it's delightful. So if you would please stand and open your red hymnals as we sing hymn 397. Now thank we all our God.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Now if you would open page to page 124 in the prayer book, and kneeling if you're able, let us pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Glory be to God on high. Keep, O oh Lord, your household the church in continual godliness, that through your protection it may be free from all adversities, and devotedly serve you in good works, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the prophet Habakkuk. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. 
I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture swooping to devour. They all come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They deride kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. They build earthen ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own strength is their God. O Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, we will not die. O Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. O Rock, you have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will come and, not, and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of, Je of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through this appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say this to the mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and recline at table. Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, and dress properly, and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterwards you will drink and eat? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, any youngsters that would like to attend Children's Church, please follow the crucifer to the door, and uh, Miss Marilyn will lead you there. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, oh, if only we had faith the size of a mustard seed or larger that would be evident as we come here to worship and praise and glorify you. Help us to be strong, Lord, to deal with each and every day that we would let the light of Christ shine in us. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your holy word. We pray this in the precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Size isn't everything. Take it from someone who is shorter than most people. This past Monday... I got together with my oldest friend in the world. We met 66 years ago in kindergarten. Pete has always been much taller than me since he's six foot two. And I used to be five foot nine. I guess I get shorter as time goes on. We reminisced about our days when we tried out together for the New York Yankees at the old Yankee Stadium. As a pitcher, his height and the fact that he threw his fastball in the high 90s was a real plus, and he was noticed. My height was a question for someone who played first base. But I made it work for me, and I could hit. But some of the scouts would again point to my height. It was not like I could go out and, you know, grow three inches. It doesn't work that way. Size isn't everything. It was so much fun on Monday as Pete and I reminisced about our journeys together. He had been the best man at our wedding. Ugh. And Marilyn and Pete's wife Nancy, they got to listen to all of this. <laughs> uh, the crowd at Danny's was uh, blessed to see these Two old guys just enjoying each other's company. The tall guy and the short guy. Again, size isn't everything. In today's Holy Gospel reading, apparently the apostles weren't content with the size of their faith. And so they asked Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus said, if you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Jesus emphatically says this in today's Holy Gospel, and goes on to say, 
In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, whoever does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Remember the apostle Peter, when he saw Jesus coming towards him, walking on the water, and Peter went to join him, walking on the water too. But all of a sudden he realized just what was happening, and he began to sink. Peter was taken on water because doubt crept in. Faith is limitless. And I think that really is at the heart of this reading this morning. Faith, trust, and then service. Jesus speaks about a servant doing his duty, and doing duty without seeking praise or glory. This is all part of Jesus' response to the request of the apostles, increase our faith. He tells his apostles that each is doing what's expected of you, no more and no less. Seems to me our duty is to live each day by faith in Jesus Christ, to walk by faith and not to be concerned with the size of the accomplishment. I've got to tell you, it is a tremendous blessing to be surrounded by some wonderful people in this church who love to do things for the service of the Lord. Yesterday, as Marilyn and I celebrated our eight-year anniversary of being here at St. Andrews, we're reminded how blessed we are to see people coming to church to praise and worship Jesus. Sometimes, in spite of heat or the weather, and many are now returning in the aftermath of the horrible thing that gripped our community called COVID. Fellowship and service builds a church, and that's what makes us a family. It's not just the people that put on the fancy robes and process with the cross. It's the people in the pews that get down and dirty to do stuff. We have a small handful of people. But again, size is in everything. We are a very productive church. Jesus illustrated his teaching on faith by pointing to a nearby mulberry tree a large, stout tree known for its longevity and deep root system. Our faith is to be like a mulberry tree, large, strong, long-lasting, deeply rooted in the love that we have for God. When Jesus taught his disciples to say to the mulberry tree, the Greek word for say, elegete, is in the imperfect tense. Now, all of you know what the imperfect tense is, don't you? No, well, I'm going to tell you. The imperfect tense is an action that's still going on, even in the past. In other words, to repeatedly command the problem to depart. For example, be gone, Satan, repeatedly commanding him to depart. Don't just say it once, but keep going on until you achieve a breakthrough. Persistence. Keep commanding your problem to be uprooted. Don't give up and continue to keep the faith and believe. I think Jesus is saying that the only way to increase our faith is by using whatever faith we do have. Even a teeny tiny faith the size of a mustard seed could uproot the tree with the strongest roots and transplant it elsewhere, like in the sea. Uh, the kids are in the back right now, and they're all being given a mustard seed by Miss Mallon. And uh, I had given mustard seed out about three years ago, had the ushers give everybody a mustard seed. I think some of them are still in the pews. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but it, it's very important that we understand that even minuscule faith, if exercised, can accomplish what would appear to be impossible. If you use it, it will grow. The impossible, immovable mountains which challenge us suddenly are no longer impossible, no longer immovable barriers. The mountainous nature of the problem is no longer mountainous. 
together with God, we're an overwhelming force. If you think for one minute that you're an overwhelming force, you better think again. Because none of us in here can do anything without God. It's God that carries things out. And he uses us as a vessel. In Matthew 21, 21 to 23, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive, if you have faith. The requirement to moving mountains in prayer is having faith in God. Size isn't everything, but persistence and belief in faith, in your faith, is. So why did Jesus use a mustard seed? Well, today we have everything at our fingertips. You want a mustard seed, chances are you go into the kitchen and look at your different spices. We have uh, phones. We can check on something. You know, if you hear something important in church and you want to find out more about it, not during church, I hope, but after church, you'll go out and use that G-O-O whatever and go out and find it, look at it, and learn more. We have so many things. For example, we have microwave ready-to-eat food. Just pop it in. And in moments, you have a dinner. Macaroni and cheese, boom, it's there. So many things. But in Jesus' day, people grew their food because almost everyone had their own garden. An important part of the garden was the mustard plant. It was well known for its power against disease. It counteracted against venom. And, while it's pretty spicy, it adds its unique flavor to food. How many people in here reach for the hot sauce? I figured that. It's always this side of the church. That's why they're all by themselves. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But think about that. that. Mustard seed is so tiny. And when it grows, it doesn't just become a plant, it becomes a tree. A tree on which birds perch. Faith is like a seed. It starts with something small and over time grows into something larger that allows us to do great things, not in our name, but in Jesus' name. The apostles thought that they would be more effective if Jesus would only grant them more faith. Increase our faith! And Jesus focused not only on the quantity of faith, but its character. More faith does not mean greater ability to accomplish things, because God is the one who does the work. Even a small amount of faith can lead to remarkable results if it's the result of a genuine, authentic trust in Almighty God. Size isn't everything. You sort of get the title of this sermon? When we ask for more faith, like the disciples did in today's Holy Gospel, it's often because we're facing struggles. Things are facing to us, and we're like, oh, gosh, what are we going to do? And we fear that our faith will weaken, or we won't match the trials that we're facing. Jesus tells both the disciples and us that the size of faith we have is not important. What matters is the quality of our hearts the quality of our faith. A small amount of faith will enable us to do great things for God and with God. Having faith doesn't mean that we'll have the power to perform amazing miracles. Sometimes the simplest things done in faith can have huge impacts. Just touching someone on the, so on the shoulder and saying, I'm praying for you, I love you, 
can have an impact. You don't know what people are dealing with inside. But just knowing that their brother or sister in Christ is touching them and saying, I'm praying for you. Or seeing the face of a young acolyte comes out to serve a first service as an acolyte and has a look of awe and wonder on their face. Believe me, in the last eight years, I've seen tremendous growth in each and every acolyte serving the Lord. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. How many of us have gardens? I know Marilyn does. They all start as seeds. Once these seeds are planted, they slowly grow into plants and vegetables of different sizes. There's a seed that I detest, and it's not going to grow anymore. We had it sprayed on Monday. No more bahia grass. <laughs> it's gone. They did a good job on that. So, but, you know, no more jungle. But everything in the, in the lawn, in the garden, starts out as seeds. And they, they grow into plants and vegetables of various sizes. Marilyn has this little garden inside that starts in a cup and grows. And she's got cucumbers growing and all sorts of things inside under lights. It's just amazing. And those gardens, no matter inside or outside, they bear much fruit. And the benefits will be blessing you in quite a while, in just a quite in, in a little while. Think about the joy you receive when they're all grown up and you get to pick them and eat them. That's pretty great. Oh, by the way, save the seeds. You might be able to get them to grow again next time. Seven years ago, on October 20th, uh, October 2nd, 2016, I had the ushers give everybody their own mustard seed. And they're tiny. And the kids are getting what was left of those. About the size of the head of a pin. Planting them would bring shocking results. From such a small seed, you wouldn't expect it to do anything. But it grows up. And Jesus has told us that the mustard seed produces a plant that became a tree and was greater than all the herbs of the garden plants. In Luke 13, 19, Jesus described the kingdom of God by saying this, It's like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched on its branches. And Jesus told us that the seed is like a dot, grows to incredible size. In Matthew 17, 20, Jesus replied to the apostles who questioned why they couldn't heal someone. He said, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say this to the mountain. Move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And so I say to you one more time, size isn't everything. When I was serving at St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church in Tonawanda, New York, I was blessed to teach nine years of confirmation classes. As a matter of fact, I was talking to our confirmation class yesterday, and one of those classes had 29 kids in it. What a great confirmation it was when 29 kids knelt before the bishop and were confirmed. Well, this year we're going to have two. Size isn't everything. But the fact is, the faith of the people that come forward. I would tell each class that the definition of faith is this. Trusting God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for all things and in all circumstances. Think about that. It's not having huge faith or even medium or extra large faith. It's simply trusting God in everything. Our response to the blessing of faith that God gives us should be a desire and ability to do whatever Jesus asks us to do, including great things. 
We should not be concerned with the size one last time. Because size isn't everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Andrew, we're going to need new batteries. It died again. I ask you to please stand now. And if you would open your prayer books to page 127. Page 127. And let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, kneeling if you're able, please turn to page 128 as we pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Alex, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, we continue to lift up Neil, our retiring Bishop, and his wife, Marcia, as they transition to a new life of ministry. Lord, in your mercy, for all who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joseph, our president, Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, today we especially pray for Jake, Stone, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, Robert, John, Terry, Claudia, Phil, Jeanette, Adam, Tamara, Camden, Denny, Kim, David, Doris, Jackson, Ralph, Wesley, Vesta, Suzanne, Ann, Ken, Benita, Troy, Courtney, Faith, Kathy, Gabe, Anita, Ryan, Ellen, Philip, Chris, Carrie, Reuben, Becky, Lori Ann, Shannon, Barbara, Father Joseph, Father John, and all who protect our freedoms at home and abroad. I invite you to add your own requests at this time. Lord, I lift up those in my family who are having medical issues and my friends, I pray especially for those people in Ukraine and for the people of Florida and the Carolinas that went through this great hurricane. Father, I invite everyone present to call out names that are on their hearts now. Lord, we are grateful for the healing of family and friends 
We stand against the enemy and this terrible virus. Bless and protect our doctors, nurses, and first responders. Grant wisdom among all your people that we would be caring for one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed in this life, in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Okay. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now turning to page 130, let us together humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. As we pray together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This is powerful. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said to Nicodemus in the quiet at night and said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That was personal. If you plug your name into the word world, you see just how personal it is. And if anyone sins, the Apostle John wrote, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the pain the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world please stand now comes one of the most beautiful times of the service especially here at St. Andrews the peace of the Lord be always with you let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace Please be seated.
Please be seated. Getting a response. Wow. I uh, just want to tell you some things that are going on here at St. Andrews. Um, next Saturday, I have the privilege, Marilyn and I have the privilege, an acolyte who I've known for 17 years uh, from St. Bartholomew's up in Tonawanda, New York, has asked me if I would marry uh, Anthony, him, him and uh, his future wife, Morgan. And so in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, on the river, will be, that's a second river, actually, body of water that I've been able to do a wedding. Once was the Sea of Galilee, and now this is the uh, Tennessee River. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be married, uh, so uh, it's pretty cool. An acolyte who used to sit and stay after the service to talk with me about Jesus and baseball. Anthony Oliveri, and I used to call him A.O. <laughs> so somehow I'm going to sneak A.O. into the service. I warned Morgan about it. That's his future wife. And then uh, on the 21st of um, October, on a Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock, Chrissy Thigpen and her fiancé, uh, William Roberts, will be married here in the church. And the mother of the bride is here today. And uh, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, so two weddings in one month. Go figure. Um, and we also have some guests here today. We have uh, Sam Behar. Is that close enough? Okay. Uh, and family. They're missionaries to Japan. Uh, God bless you. And uh, you're here on a respite, or you're going to be heading back, or complicated. complicated. Well, God bless you. You know, uh, you've taken that seed and let it grow. And whatever God's going to use it for now, let him do it. And that's absolutely wonderful. And I know uh, your other children are in with, uh, with my wife Marilyn at Children's Church. Well, welcome. Glad you could be here with us today. Uh, to celebrate the risen Jesus. How wonderful. Let's uh, welcome uh, and Sam, your wife's name? Summer. Summer. That's a season. That's cool. Seeds grow. In, no, forget it. <laughs> I'm still in sermon mode. And you are Oh, okay. Well, welcome. Glad you're with us today. Well, again, welcome and congratulations on uh, being here in the States. Uh, it's a little different than Japan, uh, but it's, uh, it's what we got, and we're very, very blessed. We'll now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
Now turning to page 132 in the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is your living word from before time and for all ages. By him you created all things, and by him you make all things new. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. I'd ask you to turn to page 135 in your prayer book that we may pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Now turning to page 137, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Now I'm going to ask you to please stand and turn in your red hymnals to him 410. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. peace, to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.